Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. Bud Light sales dropped 90%, not 30% as previously reported. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. So I went to the pharmacy just yesterday, and when I was there, I surprisingly saw a Bud Light seltzer truck outside the pharmacy. Didn't expect to see them, wasn't going there to talk to the Bud Light guy, but he was there. So after I finished my eye test, I went over and I talked to the driver and I said, hey, let me ask you a question. Are the sales starting to come back? Do you have a minute to talk? I thought it would be interesting to find out what's going on locally where I'm at in New York. And the guy was nice enough to talk. It seemed like he wanted to talk a lot. So he said, absolutely not. The sales are not coming back. And I said, well, what's going on? And he said, they used to sell 150 cases a week of Bud Light. Every week, a good 150 on his route. And he works for the distributor. He's not an independent business owner himself. The distributor he works for is a business owner, separate from Anheuser-Busch. He's a salaried employee, but a big chunk of his money is based on sales. So he said they've gone from 150 cases a week down to at best 20 cases a week. If you do the math, it's around 86% drop on a good week, and often it's 90% or worse. He said people are just not interested in the Bud Light brand anymore. And I said, okay, well, do you think it's gonna come back? He said, no, it is not coming back. He said, six years from now, he's retiring. That's what he's looking forward to. He said, but in his time, he does not expect to see any business coming back to Bud Light. And then I asked him like, well, you know, your distributor, I'm sure they carry more than just Bud Light. They must carry other competing brands and things like that. I know Molson has been doing pretty well. He said, yeah, they do carry all kinds of products, but Bud Light was really their bread and butter. And losing that means it's not working. They're not making the money they used to make. And I didn't ask him, but he told me directly what Anheuser-Busch did for him as a driver working for an independent company. He said, they gave me $500. He said, Anheuser-Busch gave me $500 once. That was all they did. Didn't get any more not going to get anything else from Anheuser-Busch. I thanked him for his time. He was a really nice guy and told him to check out my YouTube channel, which hopefully he will. I've done over 140 videos on the Bud Light story, covered it from just about every angle you possibly could. Even I was surprised to hear like 90%. That's a kind of a huge number. And it's not a number that any of the businesses that used to carry Bud Light and distribute Bud Light could really ever make that back up. It's just too big of a number. It doesn't mean they're going out of business. It just means that Bud Light is now going to be a smaller, probably more regional brand because people are not going to stock the thing. Molson's doing well, though. From Blaze Media, Molson Coors makes $700 million turnaround in a year amid Bud Light fiasco. And this is what the driver was telling me. People just switched. They're not switching back. And it's not just where I'm at in New York. So where we see numbers reported as 30% off nationally, I have to say I do trust Bump Williams He's reporting numbers that he's getting from Nielsen IQ. They're the consulting firm that everybody refers to. But I still don't really understand how it could be off 90% in some markets, but 30% nationally. You would have to be off like 0% in several markets to get that average to balance out. We'll have to see what happens. I think over time, they're going to continue to see declines. But how much lower than 90% can you possibly go? And it's not just here in New York. It's everywhere. They're shutting down aluminum can plants. This one's from the Denver Business Journal. Ball Scraps Aluminum Can Factory Growth will close plant. This plant closure is related to Bud Light directly. And this is going back all the way to July. They closed two glass bottling plants, dropping 600 full-time employees. Fast Company says that Anheuser-Busch has got a strike coming as soon as March 1st, which is just days away at this point, and that the strike is unavoidable according to the Teamsters. The big dispute being the Teamsters want a guarantee of job security. Well, how can you have job security in New York if you make Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light products if the sales are off by 90%? Dylan Mulvaney's going completely berserk. Dylan Mulvaney's been ruined over this as well. And Dylan Mulvaney, of all people, probably deserves it 
From DailyMail.com, Dylan Mulvaney branded unhinged for bizarre late night TikTok rant one year after Bud Light fiasco. Also from Fast Company, and this is when they were trying to push that Bud Light should really stand by Dylan Mulvaney from Fast Company. Bud Light poured decades of LGBT allyship down the drain, and now everyone's mad. Now, there was no way they could have supported Dylan Mulvaney any more than they already did. They still haven't apologized for what they did with Dylan Mulvaney and their customers. And remember, this wasn't an accident. We found out in this Guardian article, panic and rash decision-making ex-Bud Light staff on one of the biggest boycotts in U.S. history. And this is where they said specifically they wanted to plant the seeds of inclusion. Incompetence on a national level. The idea from Mulvaney's March Madness post came from a Bud Light team member who, quote, wanted to push and make change, says a former Anheuser-Busch employee. The team member was excited to, quote, slowly but surely plant the seeds of inclusion. Well, you've planted some good seeds of inclusion in there. And unfortunately, it's resulted now in this guy losing 90% of his business, a huge chunk of his income, and all he has to look forward to is retiring in six years. The brand went on to captivate a top California brand influencer marketing agency. Quote, Bud Light was trying to advertise to the LGBT community, says a former employee of Captivate. They obviously wanted to pick an influencer who was part of that community. The actor and singer Renee Rapp was also considered, they recall, though it's unclear if those conversations ever got off the ground. Quote, I was surprised at the LGBT focus given the Bud Light name, but I was interested to see where it would go from here. Well, now we know where it went completely down the drain. But it worked out well for Molson Coors. From Blaze Media, Molson Coors makes $700 million turnaround in a year amid Bud Light fiasco. Molson Coors Brewing Company made a gigantic turnaround in the last year as significant shifts in consumer habits catapulted the company's earnings forward. The beer giant reported a very strong fourth quarter compared to the year prior, taking in $103 million for the end of 2023. This equal to a nearly $700 million turnaround when compared to a loss of $590 million for fourth quarter 2022. That's a difference of $0.48 cents per share added to start 2024 versus losing $2.73 per share the year prior. The company's market share gains come as consumers shifted away from Bud Light, according to CNBC, with the company claiming that the purchasing shifts will become permanent. Both the gains we've seen in our core brands have been consistent over nine months according to CEO Gavin Hattersley. But we're growing in every region, every channel, with every major customer in the United States, and at this point, we believe that the shifts in the U.S. beer industry are permanent, he continued. Bud Light Driver said the same thing, it's permanent. Net sales grew 9.3% in the quarter, while underlying income increased 36.9% before taxes. Molson Coors analysts said that the company was well-positioned to benefit from, quote, significant shifts in consumer purchasing habits, largely in the U.S. premium segment. This increased demand grew Coors Light, Miller Light, and Coors Banquet brands significantly. The company also flexed its muscles by spending more than $21 million on a Super Bowl commercial that featured hip-hop legend LL Cool J and smartly stayed away from political statements. What we plan to build on this momentum in 2024 with strong commercial plans, a powerful and supportive distributor network, and the financial flexibility to reinvest in our business. Meanwhile, analysts like T.D. Cohen's Robert Moscow said the company will hold on to the majority of the share they picked up from the Bud Light boycotts. However, perhaps revealing a bit more reality, Ariel Investments' Tim Fiddler said that Molson Coors core brands were growing dollar share even before the Bud Light controversy. So Bud Light just completely blew themselves up. And while Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light were busy trying to get inclusion seeds planted into their normal conservative customer base, they could not have picked a worse time because Gen Z is not even all that interested in beer. So all of them are losing a little bit of money, some of them more than others, but the beer industry is under threat. Coming from Fortune.com, Bud Light isn't the only beer brand struggling. Gen Z's prohibition vibes are souring the future of beer as we know it. Bud Light continues to hemorrhage customers after a rough 2023 when the brand's notable promotion with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney during March Madness caused many conservatives to boycott the brand. As revealed in earnings disclosed by its parent company, Appetite was lukewarm amid a 17% decline in sales to U.S. retailers, quote, primarily due to the volume decline of Bud Light. Meanwhile, Molson Coors was riding the wave of spilled Bud Light, reporting a 9.3% growth in net sales in 2023. 
rubbing salt in the wounds. It partially attributed its strong earnings to its new customers. Molson Coors was well positioned to benefit from the significant shifts in consumer purchasing habits, largely in the U.S. premium segment in 2023, the earnings report said, though it didn't name any of the company's competitors. But Anheuser-Busch can't just blame the culture wars for a tepid year. Customers appear unwilling to pick up the tab on increasing beer costs, which rose nearly 6% from April 2022 to 2023 as beer companies struggled to keep up with the increased cost of packaging and transportation caused by inflation. Other brewers experienced a similar sales slump to Anheuser-Busch, but of course Anheuser-Busch has multiple brands. Nobody got destroyed like Bud Light got destroyed. That was something they managed to do on their own. Heineken stock dropped 6% after the brewer forecasted a modest single-digit profit growth. Heineken raised prices by over 10% in the first half of 2023 and continued price hikes into the second half of the year as volumes declined. Constellation Brands, which, like Molson Coors, inherited some of Bud Light's customers, is also struggling. Net sales of its beers, including Corona Premier and Modelo Especial, rose 4% in the last quarter of 2023, but the company still reported lower-than-expected sales due to inflation-induced price hikes on wine and spirits. Molson Coors is one of the few beer companies to buck the trend. Despite raising prices like other beer brands, it has kept prices comparatively more affordable. It's also worked to capitalize on Anheuser-Busch's Bud Light stumble, spending 19% more on marketing and administration this year. But beer's growing on popularity, much of it due to a brewing prohibition vibe among Gen Z. The next generation of supposed beer drinkers could threaten the entire industry. While beer remains the alcoholic beverage of choice among Americans, it has waned in popularity over the past 20 years, according to a 2022 Gallup poll. U.S. beer shipments in 2023 are expected to be the lowest in a quarter century, and liquor's stronghold on the market share means it has eclipsed beer and wine sales two years in a row. Gen Z is particularly responsible for these trends. Fewer young adults are interested in drinking, with 62% saying they ever drink at all compared to 72% two decades ago. Not only are Zoomers not interested in spending money to go out, but they also see drinking as unhealthy compared to cannabis. Two in three 18 to 24 year olds are somewhat or very concerned about the impact of drinking on their health, according to a July 2023 civic science survey of 5,545 respondents. For Zoomers who do want to drink, they prefer high quality spirits and ready to drink cocktails, though mocktails and non-alcoholic beverages, also favored by Gen Z, are growing at double digit rates. Beer companies are trying to keep up with the changing trends, pivoting energy to low and non-alcoholic beverages. Anheuser-Busch plans to have alcohol-free or low-alcohol drinks such as Bush N.A. and Budweiser Zero account for 20% of its sales by 2025. So as Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light burn their customers, these are new customers that are not even interested in beer in the first place. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.